What's up everyone? Welcome back to another Apple Tree Surfboards Tech Talk. Um, today we're going to have a bit of a technical one because we're going to talk about board weight again. Now we've done a few videos about board weight and what it does for your riding in both kiting, foiling, surf foiling, wing foiling. But what we haven't really explained is how the Apple Tree boards are exactly constructed and how it works with the weight because that's quite a different story altogether. So, in general, when you're making a board, the weight, the final weight of the board is determined by three factors. One is the fiberglass or the carbon fiber that's around, so your fiber matrix. And then the second one is your resin, in our case, pure epoxy resin and the amount that you use in resin. And then finally, there's of course the, the foam weight, uh, the board weight. Um, these three factors determine how heavy and also how strong your boards are. Now in our boards, in our construction that we've explained over and over again, but we'll keep doing, we're using this vacuum infusion process. And what that does, it actually creates the ideal ratio between fiber and resin in your board. And why do you need this ideal ratio? It's important for the fibers to get their maximum strength. You want to get the maximum strength out of the fibers. There's an ideal ratio of the amount of epoxy resin that you have to get into that fiber. And it's actually quite a low amount of resin to make the fiber like as strong as it can potentially be. And the only way to get this is through vacuum infusion or through a pre-prec process. Now a pre-prec process is not really possible on boards, but resin infusion turns out it is. It is something that no other brand is actually is currently using in the market um, because it's extremely hard process to do. But we've at Apple Tree Surfboards, we've cracked this uh, the code to, to doing vacuum infusion a number of years ago and nowadays we do all our boards with this vacuum infusion tech. So the, like I said, the ideal ratio between fiber and resin is super important and this uh, infusion tech is the only way to get there. So in our smaller boards, we think that we've cracked the code for making a board super light and super strong. Like it's maybe not the lightest board in the market, but, but pound for pound, the strength you're gonna get from these boards is so much higher than anything else. And also the strength, especially on the rails and the tails and the fin boxes are, are, are locked in in such a way that they basically never break out. Um, this is not only due to the fiber and the resin, but also due to the foam that we use. So we use this waterproof, super high density foam that uh, gives the boards its inherent strength and also it's completely waterproof. So if you do get a small ding in your board, you don't actually need to repair it uh, straight away because water cannot absorb into the foam guaranteed. Now, there is one small downside to this foam and that is that it is slightly heavier to your industry standard EPS foam. Um, this is a downside that we really uh, have thought long and hard about if it's something that we uh, do accept but all the testing that we've done this foam feels better it feels more lively it stays lively years after after the board has been constructed it will stay nice and fresh um, so in the and actually the strength is so high that in the end we decided to stick with this uh, with this foam in all of our production boards um, there is on smaller surfboards, like this kiteboard here, that's only an 18 and a half liter one, there's no problem with the foam weight. Uh, it's still one of the lightest boards you can get. If you go into the foil boards, and especially into the bigger ones, if you go over 70, 80 liters, somewhere roughly around that point, we lose the advantage of having a really low weight shell. So low weight epoxy, low weight fiber, and the weight of the foam slowly starts to get into play a bit more, which is of course definitely a downside and we're always trying to evolve and trying to find new ways to, to combat this or different foams. But in general, that's sort of where the tipping point is. So if you go, if, if we would make a board 150 liters, for instance, it would really be too heavy and there is better foams out there. But because we focus on making high performance boards for 
riders that know what they're doing and riders that want to have the highest quality, they generally don't want a board that's over 100 liters or over 90 liters. So in our case, it is actually uh, still a very big positive, especially for the kite boards and the normal surfboards and the surf foil boards. The boards are just super light and super responsive and super stiff, so you get all the advantages. So at Apple Tree Surfboards, we do communicate the average weights of our boards. For most of the boards, you will find them online. There's always a bit of a deviation because of the custom production process. We, we accept the 5% up and down from this. It's not on all the boards, so if you want to know specific weights for the board that you're after, shoot us an email and we, all, we are always able to, to help you out and give you an estimate. Um, if you, again, want to know what the weight does for your riding, click up here, because we have made more videos about what the board weight does for your riding and when you might actually want a slightly heavier board. So we've talked about that. And um, yeah, let us know if you have more questions, put them in the comment section down below. We read all of your comments, we try to answer all of them. If you have suggestions for new videos or you have more extensive questions, hit us up, shoot us an email. We're, we, we, we read all the messages that we get on all the platforms. Uh, we're making plenty of these videos, so give us a follow, give us a like, a thumbs up if you like this video. And we hope to see you in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>